Yeah. Thank you, moderator. And how are you doing today, moderator? Been a long day, long week. Yep, lots of webinars. Yep, <laughs> right on. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the chief FX market strategist for TradersWay.com, an ECN that gives traders access to the foreign exchange market, but also energies, metals, and indices, and binary options, and all these wonderful, fabulous things, all the tools that you need for success. And I also help clients every single day plan out their uh, trading day. I do that at 7.30 in the morning. Monday through Thursday, I do that at Forex.today. But uh, every Friday, I do it here, FX Street. And I've been doing webinars at FX Street for over 10 years. And it's amazing because I am I just turned 13. <laughs> It's amazing. I've been doing like forever. <laughs> so good to have you. So we have a general um, outline here. Um, you're the boss, and I am your humble currency trader or analyst. So uh, we'll do what you want to do. I can cover technicals, and I can cover fundamentals, and very often I cover trader psychology. I'm short. Fundamentals, please. <laughs> Fundamentals, please. All right. So what's going on in the world? Japanese industrial production. Only negative 0 0.8 year over year. Yeah, all right, good job, Japan. Only a little bit worse than last year. <laughs> uh, it must be frustrating for those that are trying to get that number to go up. Amazing, huh? You know, it's kind of interesting is that, you know, we keep reading about, wow, you know, interest rates are not supposed to be this low in America for this long, and... Well, who invented quantitative easing? The Japanese. How long have interest rates been unbelievably low in Japan? 25 years? Hmm. Yeah, we could do uh, retail sales. Sure, just, uh, just remind me. Sometimes I get off on a tangent, but I'm happy to cover that for you. How does that sound? Is that fair? More than a Turkish. Okay. All right. Japanese September Conference Board leading economic index. Well, they did sneak in a positive number before, back down to negative 0 0.8. Wah, wah, wah. So Japan's accomplished uh, nothing, apparently. Yes, I will, Ron. I'll get to that. Thank you, though, for reminding me. Yeah, I'm doing a, a live trading room today for free if anyone would like to join. I'll cover that in a second. Where I'll, we'll, we'll do the New York Open together. That sound good? Hope so. All right, so uh, China had a bad day, huh? Stock market dropped like a ton of bricks. So, how's Europe doing? Okay, French uh, GDP, 1.2%. Huh. German GDP, 1.8%. Spanish CPI. Negative 0 0.7. Eurozone GDP? No, oh, no number there. 0 0.3 for the quarter. Not a huge quarter. So that, that should be a little, what? What is, it, what is this, 1.6? 1.6. 
didn't cut the paste. Cool. And then, like I said, I'm hosting a live um, trading room today, starting at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. That's right after this webinar. Special event. You're welcome to swing on by. It's completely, totally free. I'll go for a couple of hours. I, I do have um, I do have a meeting at my uh, children's school to celebrate Thanksgiving. So I can only stay till about maybe 1030-ish. But uh, here's what you do. Just go to tradersway.com, open up a demo account. And then you click on this link and you'll be good. Oops. Would anybody like to join me? We'll trade the New York Open. We'll listen to the uh, floor traders at the S&P 500. Like I said, all you need to do is open at least a demo account, maybe a live account. Opening a demo account it will take less than one minute. Oh, it is Friday the 13th. Interesting. So we'll get back to that later, but it'd be nice if I saw you guys over there. End the week on a big note. <clears throat> I couldn't grab the, the link. Oh, I guess, you know, I can exit out of this and grab the link that way. It's the end of the world as we know it. So you click here. There we go. Boom. And if uh, you'll be able to log right in, if you already have a demo account. If not, just click on the button that says open an account. I mean, come on, right? You got that? So hopefully I'll see you over there. All right. So uh, I think you can see what I can see. And that is the stock markets of the world. Cool. One thing we've been watching is, is the Nikkei. That's the Japanese stock market. And uh, it's got room to fall a little bit more. Okay, we did this two days ago, I guess it was. May Actually, you know what? No, we did it here on the way up, didn't we? I, that's right. I remember that. All right, so I thought it could go up a little farther. It never really did, and it rolled down. We're just kind of all eyeballing it, but that's where we are. Nice big move over, the, over a couple of weeks, right? Seems pretty reasonable that we get ourselves a pullback. Now, are you guys worried about the, the stock market? Let's go to the U.S. stock market, uh, S&P 500. Are you worried about this decline? Does it seem significant? Yeah, this is portfolio managers rebalancing their portfolio. Um, some, some stocks benefit from interest rates going up, and some stocks are hurt. By stocks going up, by interest rates going up, I mean. So who wins when interest rates go up? Banks, okay? Who loses when interest rates go up? What business models? Exporting companies? You can't say that, though. You can't just say equity is wrong. That's a run. Uh, I don't believe that's true. How about, like, uh, if credit card, if credit card um, interest rates go up, because they'll go up with everything else, people tend to spend more, right? Or pff, spend less, sorry. If your credit card interest rate goes up, you tend to spend less. All right, so that's why retail sales is interesting. Um, let me get something for you. Hang on. Um, hang on. I wanted the stock price. Macy's stock. 
price. There we go. Right. Very, you know, just a, what? You, let's go three months. That's the stock price of Macy's. <laughs> OEV. And they're not doing anything terrible. Oh, there's worse than that. But that just, you know, Macy's is a big, um, you know, retail outlet, right? A re retail store. So it's a, it's a bellwether. But it was, you know... It was recently sixty five bucks. Look at this. Seventy two dollars. Now it's forty. That's a tough year, huh? But remember all year, right or wrong, all year many traders and investors thought the Fed was gonna interest rates, remember? Every every Fed meeting, oh, they're going to raise, oh, they're going to raise. They have to raise. It's negligent that they haven't raised. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Yeah, North, Nordstrom's probably the same. J.C. Penney's not quite the same, though, Jimmy, because uh, it's already basically a worthless company. So, it you know, people buy it off the bottom. Right, but you'll sell a liter off the top. So anyways, what I, what I was suggesting, though, is as portfolio managers feel like interest rates are going to go up, and, and future ex expectations are really important in, in all kinds of things when trading and investing in, into stock, you know, f future prices and all these different things, because it affects your discounting models and so anyways, at some point, if the market believes the Fed's going to raise interest rates, those portfolio managers need to tiptoe out of one portfolio of stocks that benefit from quantitative easing. And they got to slowly change the mix of the companies they hold to get rid of the ones that are going to be hurt when interest rates go up and then add – the companies that will benefit when interest rates go up. You see what I mean? And then you go through this transition or transitionary process. So, you know, it's no no need to freak out, I guess. Just decide, do you want to own the S&P 500 five years from now? And if so, what would you be willing to pay for it? That's pretty logical, isn't it? Well, uh, Mohit, I don't want to go through all these different stocks and then start, you know, differentiating different retail, peop you know, companies within that. It doesn't matter to me. I guess I could look at an ETF for the retail sector. How about that? But. <clears throat> I'm not picking stocks today. I'm just suggesting, you know, we need to pay attention to macroeconomics, and some might say, that, you know, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. And I'm like, no, don't worry about it. The sky's not falling. So one of the things we are required to do as professional traders is identify previous levels of support, and they might be support now, right? And this area here was important in the past for whatever reasons so maybe that will be important in the future and then of course this this area here so if price comes down to these areas it could it could be interesting we could get this possibly we could get this possibly and we could get this possibly the thing is to be ready Hot to go, H O T T O G O. Do you have a bias? So, Morgan, is it Morgan and Adam or Adam Morgan?
Morgan. Cool. <clears throat> okay, which one? Right? That's the question? Well, you need to be ready because how would I know? Okay, let's let's talk about that. Okay. Which one is it going to bounce at? Well, I don't know. But isn't the valuable information that we know where it might for logical, intelligent reasons? Okay. And two, we, know, we believe, let's say I believe I would like to own the S&P 500 five years from now. Fine. So I am a bull. I am a buyer of this asset. And these are the areas I may consider buying if I get some sort of trigger. I can decide to buy this. But I would like to see some sort of trigger here to indicate that it's going up. And if I get that, I may choose to buy it. I may choose not to. Okay. But that would be a good place. I think it would be interesting for it to come down, tickle 2,000, and then do that. And then I may buy it. So... Maybe instead of a four-hour, maybe we're on a 15-minute chart, and in that one of those gray areas, we get a double bottom, higher, high, higher, low, and I take the shot. And I'm long here, or I'm long here, or I'm long both. Okay? So what is your trigger, Morgan? What makes you pull the trigger? What do you use? Oscillators, moving average crossovers, candlestick patterns. You should already know. Okay. And volume, wow. All right. KC's like all of those things. Okay, cool. So that's the easy part, right? To be pulling the triggers easy. Deciding what you want to do before you do it, it takes a little more thought. And then identifying areas you may actually do that. So if I'm a bull, I never, 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 never buy at resistance, ever. I never buy high. That's it. I'm done. Easy. How complicated is that? So if I'm going to buy, I can only buy at support. It's not just for the stock market, for anything. So I need to identify areas of support. Also, do I like buying situations like this? I never buy breakouts. Never. If you're doing breakouts, it's because you don't have a plan and you're chasing price. All right, because that's, that's a downtrend in that moment, right? So that's why, let's say, doing this, I want to get down to an area I pre-identified as support, then see a reversal pattern, because then I want to be buying dips in the context of an uptrend in the direction of my fundamental or long-term technical bias, okay? So, for example... If today, let's say just it did bounce here, let's say. Let's say it goes up to here, comes down to here, makes a big move, drops, and then I buy it. I'm anticipating a higher high, then I'll come back down, and I'll buy it again, so on and so forth. And now I'm buying dips in the context of an uptrend in the direction of my long-term fundamental bias. Okay, I'm not buying a, a falling knife. I'm not catching a falling knife. Does that make sense? So what happens to the dollar when the stock market goes up? The dollar gains strength.
So you got to keep an eye on these areas. Now, I have a couple of plans here for the euro. And we're still waiting for the first one, actually. We're still in that area. Made a little, I guess if I go into an hourly chart, did a little 618. Like to see a lower low. Is that too many indicators, guys? I have a I have a Fibonacci study. I have some trend line projections. Is that too much? So that's what I'm looking at at the moment. A Z moment. Let's look at our yen yen. Now at the 618, I was hoping the 50% would hold. Never did it. <clears throat> Yesterday came down to the 618, headed up. And if you're a bear, that's a perfect sell. It's a roll reversal. No follow through here, so if I was a bear, I'd be worried about this big time. Okay. But there we are in the context of things. This is a nothing of a little move, but that's what we're playing right now. But you could oops, you could maybe plan this out on a on a higher context. Okay. And that gets us down here again, 121. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel blind. So just zooming back in, we're we're just up here, man. It's nowheresville. Yeah, we're still at the 187, or Snoop Doggy Dog uh, Beast. Let's go. Guess we can go here. What is this? Oh, what did it do? What? Where are these orders? Hang on. Something got messed up. What is this? Stop loss. Is that my take profit? Why would my take profit be there? What? Hang on. Wow, something got messed up. WTF? Huh. Nothing like a negative take profit order. All right. 
So anyways, we'll see how we do. That's the beast on 187. Wait, EA messed some things up, man. I have to double check why that went down that way. All right. No, we were scalping the New York Open. So I think I bought this. If I recall, it was, I think it was something like that was the plan. All right, let's move on.com. Let's go to the news trade. Let's do some gold and some oil and all of that. How's your gold doing, huh? There's so many people that just all they want to talk about is buying gold. It's amazing. My whole story the last, what, two and a half, three years, I'm like, there is no reason at all to own gold. <clears throat> I still believe that's true. So look at that. Anyways, uh, break out of the range, retest of the range. Be interesting to see if we stay below it. But I think there's a lot of folks that are going to support the thousand line, so be careful. That's right, unless it's the end of the world, right? Yeah. <clears throat> or we're crushed by inflation. <clears throat> I don't think we have to worry about that right now, right? <clears throat> Let's take a look at oil. 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 Let's get rid of that. That was a little scalp on the news. All right. Way down here, 42 and a half. Holy smokes, eh? That's low. Thing is, are you going to treat it like a lower low? Or is it just noise? Yeah. Well, we'll see. Right? We'll see. It it seems to me if you have this as your support, and I think I've been calling it 44 for quite a long time, you know, a drop to 42 and a half is a clear lower low. Right? Jimmy bought the range. Cool. Hey, has everyone signed up for the uh, live trading room for the New York stock market open? Has everybody got that? Right? Just for today, trading the New York stock market open live. We'll listen to the, the traders on the floor of the S&P 500. Just open up a demo account there and that link 
if you're logged into your level, if you're logged into your back office, that link will take you to the special page. So please swing on by. What do you mean you couldn't find it? Oh, well, it's right here. You go, Wyatt. If you just found it, there it is, Wyatt. <laughs> copy it, right? What you do is you copy it, Wyatt. Then you got it. Yep. A little control C action. All right. So let's move. Let's look at some dollar pairs. <laughs> Yeah, I like to use my little pinky on the control and my pointy finger on the C. I don't know why. All right. I just feel funny that way. All right, so what do you want to do with this? Well, I, I believe we still need to respect that it's making higher highs and higher lows, but I am a bear. Okay. So I'm hoping to see a move, in particular around the stock market open. Let's say we come down and tickle this. Uh, we'll play it off the weekly just because it's there. Then it comes up. And we're going to kick it off of here this time. And then we're going to drop it like it's hot. Because I don't want to be a seller until I get lower lows and lower highs. So right now this is a higher low, right? Lower high, lower low would be bearish. Wait, 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 wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Sell, 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 sell. That's one thing I'm looking at. Now, you know, that's a 15-minute chart. That could take all day. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I smell fine. Boom, 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 boom. Well, let's go to Aussie. Ba 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 room. Ba 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 do 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 all right, here's our Aussie. Not that accurate on this one, huh? Double bottom, higher high, higher low. Buy it was the idea. Never quite got it. Go! Oh! It did 786 on us, though. But here's the thing. If I was a bear, I would get ready to sell this. Okay, so let's do the context of a trend. Okay. So if I was measuring it that way, I guess I have two channels. Let me get rid of that channel. Of course, all channels just disappeared. All right. So on the short term, we need to plan it out like that, right? Just at least acknowledge... If I'm a bull, it's not a good time to buy. But if I'm a bear, it might be a good time to sell. Whoa. Yeah, Baltic Dry Index, way low, huh? Isn't that amazing how low that is?
just amazing. That's so amazing. We were we were at two thousand, and that's when things were bad. So five hundred, and down another three point three percent, huh? Amazing. Bank of Canada's Wilkins. He says, recoveries being held back by headwinds that are not fully understanding. Well, how could you how could you say like, yeah, Canadian economy is getting crushed, but we don't really know why. <laughs> really? That's what you said. Wow. Look at listen, listen to this guy. Targeting of CPI distracted us from rising risks. Wow. This guy's like making up excuses. Amazing. Huh. What a funny guy. So anyways, we got October PPI coming out and we have retail sales coming out. Sweet. Now it's funny, PPI Wow, speakers just blew my ears up. Um, PPI is a basket of raw material that is going to be used to build a product. It's not the product itself. And once it's built, then it goes through the supply chain and eventually lands on, on a shelf, and you either decide to buy it or you decide not to buy it. That would be retail sales. What sits in the middle of that is CPI, which is the consumer price index. Not the so we'll look at inflation or lack of inflation at the at the producer level. But with oil prices falling, oil is often used in the manufacturing of a final product. So with oil prices down, it's extremely doubtful that PPI would be going up. So right now, dollar index trying to head up. That That's interesting. All right. So anyways, there's the channel. If it doesn't fall, it could be a significant change because it's supposed to fall. You get it? So if it doesn't fall, that's significant. Can you look? At the Euro Aussie. Okay, are you a bull or a bear? Do I even have a Euro Aussie on this chart? Yeah. Okay. Why do you want to buy Aussie? That's it? They have a trade deficit and they're an exporting nation. A falling Baltic dry index would indicate weakness in, in a commodity currency as well. China is struggling. Their stock market just crashed again. All of that should be bad for the Aussie, right? So I don't know. I, I, be careful. I'm not disagreeing with you as far as direction and other things, but um, be careful. I just got to make sure you're, you're thinking ahead. All right. So most of this is zero weakness. Okay. So when I look at the uh, the Australian dollar versus the US dollar 
nothing's really changed much in the last like three weeks, right? So what you're looking at here is Euro weakness, not necessarily Aussie strength. Now I was long Aussie yen, made some pips and stuff like that, but um, that's more yen weakness than Aussie strength. So maybe you're doing something similar. That's fine. Okay. So it comes down to where have you entered and where do you think it's going? So let's do... Um, And notice this. This pair is playing monthly pivots. Okay, here's the monthly central. Here's the monthly S1. It's definitely playing monthly pivots. I don't know if that's helpful to you. General trend seems to be um, one that has been down. Okay, made a lower high. Lower low, lower high. Uh, okay. I guess maybe that dip there. See, when, once you make a lower low, but you're in in the low. I guess would have been here. You drag this one across, and that's your general selling zone. So you'd fib from this high to that low. You'd fib. Of course, you can see it's a weekly pivot that brought this down. All right, but it's definitely playing off the weekly pivots, or month, sorry, monthly pivots. The ultimate target by the end of the month is here, 170. Sorry, not 170, 147. Um, that's the conservative. The aggressive is here. Okay. And I think a trader would want to hit that before the American Thanksgiving holiday. So that's the target for the downtrend. And because the week, sorry, the uh, monthly central is our resistance, what that does is it suggests that. Uh, sorry, monthly S2 is the target. That's just pivot point theory. If this is your top, this is your projected bottom. So let me zoom in here. Uh, 146. 146 is the target, okay? Well, Alan, they are still doing quantitative easing. They're just not adding to quantitative easing. So anyways, uh, pretty easy setup if you're a bear. I don't know if you took it off this area. But as a bear now, there's not much to do. If it doesn't make a lower low below the monthly support, I will be nervous. So if you're a bull on this, uh, you could look for sort of a move like this to buy it. But if you're a bear, the only place I could see to sell this 
is right there off the roll reversal. I mean, that's it. Just it's pretty straightforward. Okay, but you've already done that, I, I'm sure. It's probably what you're worried about, and and you're probably worried about this cycle. So um, you just kind of need to let it run. It could bounce out and take you out off the weekly support or the monthly support. <laughs> both are fair game. They're both support ones. Okay. Well, yeah, if you're a bear, you should let it break. I mean, depends what puts you in, right? So this hourly chart says it's not going to break. So you would take your profit. Ideally, you take a profit down in here, right? But that's what the hourly chart says. I don't know if that puts you in or not. What does the four hour say? Four hour says it's, it will make a lower low. So how do you put that together? Does that just blow your mind? How do you put that together? It's going to do this according to the hourly chart. It's going to come down. It's going to bounce. And then it's going to fall. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel blind. All right. That's what this chart says. Pretty easy trading, though, huh? On this pair. I'm sure you're cleaning up the pips. It's very easy technical analysis. It's good stuff. Any other currency pairs you'd like me to cover before the news? Swissy, all right, why not? Swissy, all right. Okay. Are we at support or are we at resistance? Makes things really easy, huh? So if you want to buy it, let it drop down to the 21, take a shot. Drop a lot, take a walk. Feels heavy. Seems like you could just follow the stock market with that, huh? Risk on, risk off, risk on, risk off.
Yeah, there's a lot I don't like about this, but... Yes, I did. Yeah, not my fault. Still happened. Not my Trader's Way account, though. That's for show. Some other, some other, uh, not to be mentioned, broker. Yeah, the timing on this just seems like sort of out of whack a little bit. I've seen better setups than this. That's faux show. Look at the pivot cluster, though, the weekly and the monthly. So if this breaks down, we're going to M1. Down here at 98. Pretty late in the week, huh? Just looks like consolidation to me. Pretty late in the week. We haven't had a major move yet. Why should we have one now? All right, let's get ready for the news. I think we'll trade Euro USD. Are you okay with that for the news? Want to make sure you feel comfortable. We'll use tradethenews.com. And I hate when my charts get all messed up. All right, about two and a half minutes. Yeah, still, I still have 250 pips on it. The world's most boring trade. <sighs> So again, we're going to trade the New York stock market open in a special webinar room after this event here at FX Street. It's for clients at tradersway.com that have demo accounts or live accounts. If you want to hang with me for another hour or so today right at the stock market open, 
We'll listen to the floor traders actually trade. Colvin buys, buys, buys. Advanced retail sales at line expected 0.3%. We routinely hear them drop $100 million. Yes, also expected 0.4%. Control group expected 0.4%. We'll swing on by. Demand for October. Month of month expected 0.2%. X food and energy expected 0.1%. X food, energy, and transport expected 0.1%. Year over year PPI expected minus one point two percent. Advanced retail sales and October PPI data in the U.S. for just a few seconds. Watch the bound at the midpoint psych level. Whoa! Sales 0.1% is two tenths lower than expected. X autos at 0.2% is two tenths lower than expected as well, with the back bond rise down another tenth to minus 0.4%. X autos and gas at 0.3% is one tenth lower than expected, and control group at 0.2% is two tenths lower than expected as well, but back bond rise off of the control group to 0.1% from minus 0.1%. PPI at minus 0.4% is six tenths lower than expected and a negative reading in the month of month. X Food and energy at minus 0.3% is four tenths lower than expected. X food, energy, and transport at minus 0.1% is two tenths lower than expected. Year over year, PPI at minus 1.6%, four tenths lower than expected. X food and energy at 0.1% is four tenths lower than expected. And X food, energy, and transport year over year, one, one tenth lower than expected at 0.4%. Again, retail sales data across the board lower than expected. The PPI month over month, a surprise and negative reading. Yeah. All right. PPI, negative 0 0.4. They were expecting a positive number, and the year over year is, is bad. So oil prices are still falling. And retail sales, they're a miss. Not good, not bad. I mean, look, here's what we were hoping for, 0 0.3. What is that? We got 0 0.1. I mean, come on. Either way, right? Treasury is rising on the weaker than expected retail sales and PPI data. 10 year of six and a half ticks, yielding two spot, 289%. Oh, it doesn't have to do anything, Martin. D. Martin. Is that Doc Martin? Oh, it's Dwayne. What's up, Dwayne? <laughs> yeah, uh, look, if you're just going to scalp the volatility... You're going to buy it somewhere between the 3A2 and 618. You're going to trade the, the volatility of the news. So it depends if you're in event-driven strategy or if you're going to swing this down. You might say, yeah, that's bad, but... And, uh, and then you sell it anyways, right? So, I mean, it really depends on how you're going to play it. But if you're asking me on how to scalp it, then, yeah, you, you'd be buying it. Yeah. So uh, the typical scalp is, you know, somewhere between the 3A2 and 6.8 Fibonacci retracement. Okay. Now we've tickled the 3A2. 
Okay, it's held now for the last three minutes. Sorry, guys, if you didn't know how to trade this. I mean, I've been doing this at FX Street for 10 years now, so I just assume you know. But if you don't know, you need to ask questions. I don't know what you don't know. And I've been doing this a long time, and a lot of people have traded with me over the course of the 10 years. It's not your fault if it's your first day, right? But you should ask. Well, no, you should ask. Okay, so so in this case, just like any other news scalp, you're looking for something like this. Okay. And you could long it anywhere between the 3A2 and 618. This is your sweet spot. Okay. Anywhere in there. Okay, so right now we have a scalp in play. It might hold. You've now, it's now held for four minutes, guys. So that might be it. Not necessarily, but it might be it. But it doesn't matter either way whether you buy it at the 3A2 or you buy it at the 50% or you buy it at the 618. If, if you're going to scalp it long, your stop's just going to be down here. The, the only difference is you know, whether your patience pays off for a, you know, a closer stop or not. Got it? Oscillators and other things like that are too slow for a scalp. So even though this is a sped up oscillator on a one minute chart, it's not going to be helpful at all. Uh, again, depends on, you know, ideally you just go to the next level of resistance. Usually price puts you in and price takes you out. So it depends, you know, on how it behaves. But some people will just throw down a typical, like, 25-25 OCO. Kind of thing, 2040 OCO, that kind of stuff. Okay, another way to play it is you, the next level of resistance, which could be, oops, could be here, right? So this could be your trade. Okay, so you'd long right at the 618, which we just tickled. Your stop's here, and then you just let it, that's it, you're done. Right, like James says, bye, bye, bye. So you take a shot, and you pray. It's not a strategy, but it never hurts, right? Now, I'm swinging this, as you guys know, so I'm still up 244 pips. So, so we're right back to where we were. Last chance if you're going to buy it. Last chance if you're going to buy it. Oh, good. Look at 250. Cool. Wonder if we'll trigger some stops. This could move very well. Notice my beast is profitable again. Right on beast. Yeah, probably, hey Joseph, but the problem is I waited so long, my patience deserves profit. I'm not gonna close that break even. I'll feel like a 
who uh, I, I can't say in front of polite company, but I just can't bear not making money. I'd rather lose money than not make money. I'd rather keep the opportunity to make money than close it at break even. Forget about it. Got to get paid, honey. And look at that, full circle. From 107.50 to 107.90 to 107.50, nothing happened. <laughs> Holy smokes. Whoop, whoop. And that Canada may never go to the lower bound on raids. Yeah, USD yen's another head fake. Holy smokes. You know, that pig, though, the pig does look interesting. Someone mentioned pig might be a better trade. And it's got some nice support, although we're it's falling off of a penny daily 21. The only sales. thing messing with this is the daily chart. Lying at 4 to 5%. So I already have low. this set to fall at this level, as you can see. Well, I guess a 50%. Okay, uh, but everything else, let's say on a 15-minute chart, someone's going to think it's bullish, right? Because of all of this being potentially support, right? But I still have this, as you see, if I go back to a longer-term chart, I have this as a fall. I have it off of 3A2, but, you know, you can see my resistance level is 618, or 50%. So, uh, yeah, so if you're a bear, you need to be selling it. If you're a bull, you need to be buying it. Cool, man. Well, I think we're down to, is this our last five minutes, last four minutes? You got to squeeze another uh, question in there, guys. Let, let, let me help. Let's not waste any time. as well can saying that limits are still being tested. How's life at Harvard? No uh, complicated. <laughs> no, 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 no. Based on these numbers, the Fed will not postpone. No, Ron, you know, I, I might actually be a little bit addicted now. Um, foreign ex being a foreign exchange trader the last 10 years has just kept my mind very, very, very sharp. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly reading things, constantly thinking about the future, always planning the future, looking at, you know, gathering intelligence, formulating a strategy. This is what I've been doing for 10 years reading everything I can, going to, you know, the IMF, going to central, uh, central bank websites, downloading information, downloading reports, downloading spreadsheets, think, think, think. And my brain is like addicted to it now. It's like someone that goes to the gym just works out all the time, and pretty soon they're just addicted to working out because it just feels good and gives them endorphins. And they, they start to like how they look, and all of a sudden it's their whole life, right? So my brain is like that. So I, I get this chance to go to Harvard, and I'm taking these classes, and, and they force you to do things. I'm reading textbooks in the middle of the, the day, and I, I'm attending classes, and I'm doing research, and I'm like, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be playing video games or watching Dancing with the Stars or, or something, but instead, I'm, I'm doing classwork, right? And I love it. So 
I might just go all the way. <laughs> might as well get a PhD or something, right? Just just to preoccupy my mind. Or occupy my mind, I guess. You know? It just gives me something to do. What else am I going to do? <laughs> right? I'm like, what else am I going to do with my time? I'll trade 12 hours a day. I'll study four hours a day, and the, the rest uh, I'll waste. Well, yeah, so I'm only half joking, though, uh, Ron. So if I did something like that, if I, you know, an, an advanced degree, um, I'm fascinated in this idea that I have more than 10 years of real world experience, self-taught, had to figure things out on my own. And I know it works. I just know it. I just know how my little world works. And then you go to the academic world and they teach you these things. Like, right. I just finished a whole thing on foreign exchange. How nice is that? Right. And we are using all these different models, these supply and demand models to describe the foreign exchange market. And it makes total sense on paper. And this is what they teach. They teach these things. And you kind of have to pass the test, whether you go to Harvard or, or not. You, everyone's going to basically learn the same stuff, right? And um, by and large, it makes sense. But by and large, it's wrong. So, or let's say not wrong because it's right. I mean, it makes sense. But there are much of the time of my 10 years or so of trading where the typical textbook model is not applicable. And a lot, have, a lot of things have changed over the last 10 years in regards to central banking policy and global macro money flow and, and, and some things, right? And the models are just not as accurate as before. Okay, that might be a different way of saying it. And I feel somewhere, like I feel it, I, I haven't expressed it yet, but I feel it that I would like to maybe bring, be, I'd like to produce the unified theory of capital market finance where you take the academic modeling and the real world um, you know, day-to-day -day activities, and you, you you match them together. No, no, that's not how that works, Ron. Well, actually, pal. It's not easy, and in fact, what happens is I do really well in my homework, and I don't test very well. I never really have. You know, I'm not a memorizer. It's, I'm a very, very slow learner. But once I know, I know. And so I also get caught in these – in my last uh, midterm exam, in fact, as soon as I was done, I walked uh, – you know, uh, I told my wife, I'm like, look, I don't think I did that well because – and this – this example had to do with gold. I'm like, I know what they want me to say. I know what they want me to say. And it has to do with the bond market and the availability of loanable funds and all this kind of stuff. And they want me to say that gold prices will go up. The problem is I know it's not true. I've never seen it. And I'm going to answer in what I know is correct. And I can explain it. I can discuss it. I can show it. I can use real-world facts because I can't double-guess myself. And sure enough, I get the question completely wrong. No credit at all for the question. So I contact the, um, the fellow... Um, and I'm like, all right, I know what you want me to say. Here's what I think you wanted me to say. But if you look at this and you look at this and you look at this and you look at that and you look at what's happened in history and all these different things, 
the result is different from your answer. But I know what my opinion is, and I can back it up with fact. And they're like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> like, okay, fine. Great. So when the dollar goes up, gold goes up too, according to Harvard, right? I'm like, I've never seen that to be the case. In fact, everybody knows the dollar is the it, gold is the anti-dollar. I mean, it's cliche. Everybody knows that to be true. But all right, fine. So I so so I have to stick my guns, pal. And I only I can only I've decided. Even if I know I'm not going to get it right, I'm still going to answer the way I believe is correct. And at some point, maybe one day if I am doing a PhD, I'll still tell the world what I think based on what I believe is fact, based on real data and true world observations, and maybe that'll make me special. Hopefully I don't flunk out. <laughs> Hopefully I don't flunk out in the meantime. Huh? All right, ladies and germs, it's time to go. You want to swing by the live trading room that I'm hosting today at tradersway.com? Open up a demo account to tradersway.com. Oops, there's an L in there. Sorry. Make sure you got the L. Uh, swing on by tradersway.com. Open up a demo account at least. Maybe one day we'll, we'll, we'll earn your confidence and you'll open up a live account. But swing on by today, I'm gonna to go over there right now, I'm gonna open up the room, and we're gonna to try to front run the equity open, we'll listen to the trading floor at the S&P 500 at the Chicago Board of Trade. We'll actually hear Goldman Sachs sell $100 million with the S&P 500, and they'll probably do it within a minute. Maybe 30 seconds, maybe 15 seconds, they'll sell 100 million. Goldman sell, 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 sell! How many cards was that? That was 50 cards. Holy smokes. So we'll all do that live together as a happy family. Thank you to FX Street. Thank you, uh, moderator, admin. I hope you have a wonderful weekend.